lot of information to give you about email marketing and a short time to get there. It's kind of like eastbound and down here. So we're going to get into the home stretch. And uh, if you could just do me one favor and just wave at me just to stretch out just a little bit so that we're all awake. When people drool, it affects my self-worth. My self -worth, so thank you very much. Appreciate it. And uh, you know, thanks, thanks to Dean and Pete, I, I now know that I have to ping pong ball around a little bit. So I'm going to try and do that a little bit more. So thanks, guys. All right, so let's talk about email marketing. You already know who BusyWeb is and what we do. Um, constant contact is one of the things that BusyWeb does. If you came here expecting to see Jeff Ferrazzo, I really apologize. I'm, I'm either better or worse looking than he is, depending on who you are. Um, but um, we do a lot of the same things that Jeff does. Jeff actually works for Constant Contact. And in this email marketing role, I work for Jeff as one of the things that I do. I'm out on the speaker circuit with Jeff talking about how email marketing and how all of the things that Constant Contact can do can affect and grow your business. So the big things that email marketing can do and that Constant Contact can do are rounded out in a new toolkit. So that's the big thing that got me excited about working with Constant Contact. You know, MailChimp and Weber, Weber or AWeber, Mailer, Mailer, all of those groups can do email marketing. But Constant Contact now is up the game by letting you do newsletters and announcements, <coughs> offers and promotions, email marketing, but then also social media outreach and help you grow and do quite a bit more for a lot less than you would pay for all of that stuff separately. So that's, that's who Constant Contact is and what we can do for you inside of that. Um, today what we'll talk about is what are campaigns and newsletters and email and what that is and then how to tie together email and social media. So bringing that in. Um, when we get into that, going through, and again, very fast slide deck here, um, at its core, you want to elicit a response with everything that you do. So email marketing and bridging out and connecting with people is the best way to proactively reach out to people because they're checking their emails. You know, maybe in five years we're going to move to MMS only where people are just going to be LOL, WTF, as Dave talking about. But, you know, we're going to get to a space every single day where you're pushing messages out to people and where you're connecting with them in a real way and helping them to reach out. So a campaign both helps to push content out to you, but then it also draws people in and pulls a response. So the goal is to send out a note that's going to draw people in. And you've already heard how to do that and how to make that a reality for people by telling the story and by helping to bridge and guide people from casual interest to I need you and I need to talk to you now. So that's what you need to illustrate inside of email marketing. So newsletters, of course, there's different types. There's all kinds of them up here. Whether it's keeping your audience in the know, just sending out a newsletter, an announcement of some sort, um, business letters, press releases, or some sort of a special response, all of that stuff counts in the email marketing world. And by the way, if you try to send out more than like 50 or 60 emails at once and you don't have an email management tool like Constant Contact, you run the risk of either getting blacklisted or marked as spam and never getting seen again by your, by your prospects, but you could also get in trouble with the law. Now that's if you're doing it a lot, but you need to be careful, you need to be informed on not getting blocked out. I've worked with clients before that have sent out hundreds of messages to their contact list just out of their Outlook, and they're wondering why nothing ever gets seen anymore. They actually got blacklisted by their ISP, their internet service provider. So you need to be careful with how that works, and tools like this help you to reach out to those people without getting blacklisted and without being overly annoying. And that's one of the things I'm, going to hope, I'm hopefully going to tell you today. So as we talk about email, you know, what do you write about in an email toolkit or an email newsletter? You know, you know things that they don't, so make sure that you lead with that. And if you have access to information, if you're an attorney or if you're a doctor or if you're a spa or salon owner, you know things that nobody else in your market knows about. So write about those things. Original doesn't have to be um, necessary, so if you find really great content somewhere else on the web, email is an okay, to, in an okay place to do that. Word of caution, make sure that you appropriate or credit the source that you get for your um, messages. Don't just copy things wholesale. Plagiarism is still not, not um, looked upon highly in the web, 
despite what you'd see a lot of places out there. So how much is enough for emails? It's really going to depend on who you are and what you do. In general though, you know, you don't need to send an entire massive email. Like I said with, with web design, if you can get to them in 10 seconds or less, the content that they need and grab their attention and have them drill down for more, that's where you're going to start seeing results in email marketing. 51% of folks don't look at an email after the subject line. So if you don't see that and if you're not moving to that next step and if you're not being helpful enough, it's not going to get to half of the people that you're sending to. A great way to do that is by using pictures. So in email marketing tools, you can easily embed pictures. There's actually a free tool that you can use with Constant Contact to take your website and use the design of your website and apply it to your email. Now again, if you have an ugly website, I wouldn't recommend doing that. But if you have great content that you can build out, it's a super easy way to make your company look very, very professional. You have to be careful though, because if you don't, or if you over rely on images, and somebody has that email or that image browser turned off on their phone, they're not going to see it. So make sure that you double up and you add context or text to your emails so that people can get a little bit of both. So when you don't, when you don't use images and you, or when you only use images in your content, if somebody has that turned off, like if I go back to that last slide, you know, this most unusual evening, if all you had was that image and it was just a big red box, you're not going to click on that message. Remember, your content is viewed on mobile devices. We already talked about that. Write with a headline, keep five or six words at the top, and make sure that you're being as interesting as possible to the people you're trying to reach if you want to get your subjects read. When you use those images, you know, look, this is that red X, the dreaded red X, right? And this is an unusual evening. That's actually a pretty good one where you can see it and you know what's going on. I'm sticking. Um, but then this one over here on the far side, you can't even tell what that is because it's too big. They've, they've not set it up to be mobile responsive and it doesn't work right. So channels thrive on visuals. So if you're using Instagram or Twitter or Pinterest, having images now helps you to bridge out and to dig in a little bit more. And it really helps tell your story a lot quicker. So in Facebook in particular, we talked about that before. And Constant Contact has tools to help you reach out to that. So that's super easy. And as you repurpose your content, your email marketing can actually cross post across to all of those networks as well. So it's working smarter, not harder, and reaching out in a meaningful way. So when do you send things? Is it now, later, or whenever? Or never? So what needs to rule, what needs to rule your world is who are you sending it from, what is the subject, and when are you going to send it? So the subject line can be huge as well as who your message comes from if you're writing from sales at, people are just going to delete that, right? If you're writing from, you know, as Dave or as, you know, your online marketing buddy, you know, that might get people a little bit more jazzed about, talk, about seeing you. Same thing with subject lines. If your subject line says, busy web's newsletter for March, that's one, that's one way to do it. But saying, you know, three ways to rule and rock the web, that's going to get people a lot more excited, right? So make sure that you're selling a little bit harder and jazzing things up a little bit. We all deal with plenty of boring crap in our email inbox. You know, jazz it up a little bit. So when you do look at battle of priorities, how will you be most, most uh, recognizable? So for most things, you'll probably see that emails that come out from BusyWeb come from either Dave or Jen or someone on our team because we know everyone and so people connect out with us. Don't write it as sales or as BusyWeb or as your organization. Especially don't write it as BusyWeb if you're not me. Right? So, okay. Um, when you reach out across all of these networks, it's really important to think about how each of them is used. But a lot of places and on a lot of these networks, you are you in your network, so you might as well say that you're you in your email addresses. And you can set that however you want. And we talked about this can spam thing or the, the email illegality. The can spam act is what, it, what it's really drilled down to. I'm not going to bore you with that because we don't have enough time. Um, brand consistency helps you. You know, if everybody knows who you are and what you're doing, if they can see at a glance, oh yeah, this is that crazy bee guy. You know, I'm usually wearing this crazy yellow shirt. And that's so people know me. But uh, today I wanted to try and fit in with the rest of the BusyWeb team. So look for any of the BusyWeb folks in the back. 
um, subject lines. Again, instead of saying March newsletter or check out today, you want to do the rule of 222 when you're thinking about a subject line. You have two seconds to capture their interest. You have two words. The first two words inside of that subject line should capture and grab their attention. So buy now, check out today, and what can you get them today? So two words or two seconds, two words today can help you when you're looking at what you should send in your email subject line. So for the battle of priorities, here's some bad ones. March newsletter. Here's a good one. Tomorrow, need three hammers. Can you help? Um, Habitat for Humanity actually ran this and ran these side by side. Guess which one got more conversions than, than the other? Joe's Pet Store newsletter. Alert! Help your dog beat the heat. I even said it better. Right? It's, way, it's way more interesting. Children's classes or still time, openings available. So that's a way to actually connect with people on a visceral level. You're competing against, in my inbox, and the team at BusyWeb can, can contest to this or can attest to this, I have like 20,000 emails in my inbox. Not all, most of them have been read and or sorted, but you know, I'm, you're competing against all that crap. So make sure that you're interesting and helpful when you reach out. So then when do you send it? The short answer is it depends, but monthly is the most common for newsletters. But ask yourself, when are your readers most likely to take the action that you want them to take. So if you're looking at this and it should be like a week before a given event or maybe a month before, then a week before, then, the, then two days before, then the day before, right? Reach out to them when it makes the most sense. In general for business, Tuesdays through Thursdays from 10 a.m. to about 3 p.m. are good times to send messages, but you're gonna wanna test that because it might be different for your audience. So your best day, you know, divide your list into three groups of people, send it three days of those weeks, and then figure out which one gets the best response. You know, don't get fooled by saying, oh, this one got all kinds of opens. If nobody did anything that you wanted them to do, you know, the engage and form capture and convert part that I talked about before, if you're not converting, you're wasting your time. So make sure that you're actually getting people to convert rather than sending it out. So if you have something on a Tuesday and you send it out on a Friday afternoon, but nobody shows up on Tuesday, you're probably going to want to look at something else. So your best time, then you find that you take that best day and you split it into three times. You select three times of the day and you send that email and figure out which one gets, again, the most conversions for what you want them to do. So to send or post, make sure that you check out, again, the open rate versus the actual actions. Who cares about opens? You know, some, some people do, and some other online marketers will say, well, look at all the opens you got. Like, yeah, but I'm still broke. So check on that. All right, practical advice for this. Most folks don't see images by default, so make sure that you check it and you have text and messages. As broadband inc increases and we all get 3G or LTE or 4G or 5G or whatever they're going to say, speeds, that's getting bigger. You know, if, now, now that everybody has the bendy iPhones in their pockets, you know, that's, that's a little bit easier to see. But... Text links get more clicks than buttons for some reason. For me, it's kind of backwards, but when you're sitting in an email browsing something, if you see an un underlined word that you can click on with your thumb, people are more interested in, or more likely to do that. Logo should be left or center in your email. You don't want it to be off to the right because most folks won't even see it in that little window. And include your company name in the text. So I'm not just Dave Meyer, I'm Dave Meyer at BusyWeb in my email marketing. So key action should be above the scroll line. Don't give too many choices. Make all of your images clickable, and that's easy to do in a worthwhile online marketing tool. And then make sure that you're testing this. Send yourself a test email and open it up on your mobile devices. If you're an iPhone guy, you know, ask your Android gal friend to open it up as well. Make sure that it works on all devices. Um, we had a, a big issue with a MailChimp newsletter um, with one of our clients and finally we had to go over to, to Constant Contact because it just wasn't working in Microsoft Outlook 2008, which is what all of their, all of their organization was stuck on. You know, the poor folks, they couldn't, they couldn't even see HTML emails, so we had to fix it. So as far as social media, you know, back in 2008 when uh, BusyWeb went full time, 10% of folks were using some sort of social media. That was when Facebook was just an infant, right? They only had like a million or two people on the network. 
Now, 2013, 87% of businesses say that they're using social media somehow to reach out to their clients. And we're seeing some of that payback in diminished returns, especially on Facebook. But again, the trick is that you can be laser focused with who you're finding on all of these social networks. So the more you do, and the more you reach out in a targeted and specific way, and the more you know your audience, the better you're going to be in all of these connections. So 74% of folks rely on social networks to guide their purchase decisions. 55 share that social network, and you'll see some folks really overshare on some of these things. Hey, I just bought a brand new peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Oh my gosh, it was awesome, right? So people do that stuff, and they share about you on social networks. So you can't bury your head in the sand and not have accounts anymore. You need to be there and help tell your side of the story, especially if people aren't happy sometimes with your company. Keep a Google alert out for your company and search Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff for interactions. Because sometimes people are going to love you and you want to reward them. Sometimes people aren't and you want to talk to them. Don't ever vilify someone on a social network, even if they're obviously crazy. You want to engage with them and say, I'm so sorry that you had that problem and that the tin foil on, on your hat didn't, didn't work that day. But let me help and reach out to you and let's figure out how we can solve this issue together. And all people want to be is heard, especially in social networks. So make sure that you're reaching out to them there. And then 68% learn more about a charity if they see a friend posting about it. The sharing feature can really help. So if you're in a charity and you're not using some of these social networks, make sure that you try it and tell your story because social networking in particular is where people share what they love. And there's a good chance, especially if you're in a, in, in a nonprofit, people really love you for what you do. You have to use both. You can amplify your email with all of these connections and then your emails or your, your social connections can drive traffic back and help you grow your list. Here's some examples. You know, this is email and then all of the different social networks that Balico uses. Same thing with the Girl Scouts. Northeast Texas does this. They have really cool stuff. The way this works with the IRS or with Liberty Tax newsletters is putting this stuff out. So they've even got a Pinterest account over here and you're sharing images and videos that can reach out and be helpful to the folks that you're trying to reach. So what do we do next? What are our next steps? Set up some sort of a schedule for when all of this stuff is going to hit and when it's going to happen. We don't operate in a vacuum. Your website needs to be updated on a regular basis. Your social networks need to be updated on a regular basis. And you want to reach out to people on a regular basis via push marketing or email marketing. So do a little bit of all of that. You don't want to focus 100% on any one space, but make sure that you're reaching out and connecting wherever people spend their time. You know, some of us corporate types spend all of our days on email. But some folks are just tweeting away all day long. Some folks are just sending out text messages all day. So starting to look into that is one of the things that you're going to want to be, be aware of. And there's now new tools that can help you send email photos or text message photos out instead of just text messages. Yes? So do you have uh, statistics and reports on you know, what customer segment is more effective based on whatever, whatever kind of social media we're talking about here? There is a ton of research and information about all of those in general. Again, LinkedIn it tends to be the more corporate folks. They tend to be a little bit older, probably late 20s to early 30s and 40s inside of LinkedIn and tend to skew a little bit male. Twitter, um, urban folks, they all, they, 80 percent of folks on Twitter actually use their mobile device for most of their tweeting. You know, it's like LOL, I can't believe this ham sandwich I just had, right? Um, and then they tend to be a little bit more male as well. Facebook tends to be about 60 percent women. Pinterest is about 70 to 75 percent women. And Interestingly, if you haven't looked at Pinterest and you have a visual product, Pinterest pushes more traffic than LinkedIn, Twitter, and Google Plus combined to, tra to websites. So check it out. The like, like factor is off the charts if you do Absolutely. If you do interesting so things, shareable. if you do things that are not necessarily just business babble, it mm -hmm. is incredible how many hits you get off of them. You have to think about What's the image behind that? 
right? There's no image of a TPS report that you're going to be able to put out that's going to get people to follow you on Pinterest, right? But if you can connect up and show, you no know, health tips, wellness tips, um, things, you know, there's the will it, the, absolutely, where you go on business and the problems that you're solving there, right? So even if you're connecting up, it's all about sharing ideas and helpful tips and things that share your life and why you're the trusted resource that are going to get people to take that next step or that next action. So I know that we're uh, running just a little bit. Yes? So with uh, blogs and tweets and social media and all of that, are people spending less time on your website? Yes and no. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're right. So what, what you're finding or what we're finding now is that websites are really serving as the foundation for where people are going. So the frequency hasn't necessarily slowed down, but people are finding you on Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest, and then they're researching you on your website. So being able to push that connection and to say, okay, if you want more or to find out more about us or our product or what we can do or how to take that next step, that's where your website comes in. So in whole, it's actually kind of increasing the amount of visits, but it's for an entirely different reason. You know, people used to go to, you know, yourcompanyname.com as the only way that they could find you. But now they can hear about you any of a dozen different ways, and that's usually, your website is usually where they're going to dig all the way in. So, hopefully that helps. Yes? Another thing that helps is, I know the magazines that have really benefited from this is uh, the top 10 things. So, like a, a bank mm -hmm. will say, the top 10 ways to increase right. your uh, credit score. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Click on it. It has has those ten things that says um, check us for for a month. Or exactly. The top, you know, safest cars out there, and then you, you go to your local used mm -hmm. car place. But that and and you'll you'll note that that all has a specific purpose, right? So if I'm asking folks for that, it all drives to something that I want them to do. I'm not just posting, you know, the 15 cutest puppies on the web. I'm posting, you know, 15 things that you need to know in order to make a business decision correctly, you know, in order to solve that problem. So that's huge help. Um, so you can get started today with Constant Contact. We actually have a 60-day free trial that's available to anyone. Just drop the note. So to learn more, to connect out, you can go to constantcontact.com or BusyWeb has all that information is there as well. So wrap up, we do web design, we do hosting. You've seen this before, it's awesome. Online marketing. And then busy webinars are happening every Wednesday from noon to 1. It's free on the web. Just go to busyweb.com slash events and register up. If you want to attend in person, if you're in the Northwest Metro, we're in Champlin. Stop right by. And um, we, act we actually do tech support and answer questions for the second half of that hour every week. Um, fill out that buzz report. And then um, as a special reminder, if, um, if folks fill this out, that buzz report request form, um, one lucky person in this room is going to win $300 in busy bucks to do with what you'd like in online marketing, whether that's apply it to your email marketing or to build out something on your website or help you fix something online. So last, last second for questions. I want to get to networking because then we, can, then we can chat more and we'll be at the back of the room as well. But uh, play, play, uh, play Stump Dave one last time. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you all so much for your time, and thanks to the other speakers. Great job. Guys.